Backlash 2023 was honestly one of the most insane premium live events I've seen in a long while. The Puerto Rican crowd and Puerto Rican fan base is probably the best and the loudest fan base in wrestling. They did not give up from match one all the way to the main event even though they had the main event in the middle of the goddamn show they were just so loud they did not stop for one moment backlash just had action all over the show the opening batch was excellent the main event we'll get to talking about that but the middle of the show god damn that was good let's start by looking at the first match bianca Belair versus Io sky and this did not go the way WWE thought it would go. The crowd was absolutely hot for EO Sky. Bianca Belair, on the other hand, was getting some crazy heat. This is not what they went in expecting. But props to the two women. They realized this. They changed it up. They made EO the face in the match. They made Bianca the heel in the match. They knew what they were doing. And this could be one of Bianca Belair's best matches in her latest title run. I just want to say two things. Turn Bianca Belair heel and make EO Sky the champion. If this Puerto Rican crowd hasn't convinced the American fan base, the global fan base, that EO Sky is her, then there's no going back. And in the next match, we had the match nobody was looking forward to, nobody was expecting to be good, and nobody really cared about, but boy, did they make us care by the end of it. Seth Rollins just gave Omos the match of his life. The Omos Sapiens are running wild right now after that match. Seth Rollins sold his ass off for Omos. And to be honest, Omos worked the crowd like a seasoned pro. He knew what he was doing. He took his time. He slowed it down. He got the heat. And he made Seth Rollins look like a champion in the end. So it took Seth Rollins three stomps. Two of which were back to back and Omos kicked out. And one was a top rope stomp onto the big giant Omos. Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed for the United States Championship and what a triple threat match. Short, very short, but I think it's exactly what we needed at this point in the night. I don't think we've seen the last of Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley, which for me is a little bit of a downer. Bronson Reed looks fantastic in this match. His huge, huge, huge tsunami onto his opponents got the crowd going. His missed moonsault got the crowd going. That splash on the outside onto Bobby Lashley or that springboard maneuver, insane. Bronson Reed versus Gunther, give it to me for the Intercontinental Championship. They both on Raw, let me see it. Theory ended up getting the win after pushing Bobby Lashley aside after he hit the spear and then pinned Bronson Reed. Typical Austin Theory finish, I just wish we'd see a little bit more dominance from the champion. Now we move on to an extremely special match for Selena Vega. Selena Vega versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley coming out in the all white looking fantastic. But then out comes Zelina. Ripping the Puerto Rican colors. Ripping the flag. Getting the crowd support. And you could see it was really getting emotional for her. Which honestly made my heart melt for her. I could see she was enjoying the moment. She was overwhelmed. And she lived up to the hype. She might not have won. But she did herself proud. They had a relatively short match, but I don't think that was due to the wrestlers. I think that was just due to the crowd and their place on the card. I really hope WWE can do something with Zelina Vega now. Let her use this momentum. Let her ride this wave of the crowd being super, super hot for her. Even though it was a home crowd, we can hope that the global audience will see that Zelina Vega can be a star. Now onto the match we've been waiting for. Bad Bunny versus Damien Priest. Bad Bunny really showed up in this match. I mean... The Falcon Arrows, the Michinoku Drivers, the Cross Bodies, everything. Bad Bunny showed up. And speaking of showed up, oh, oh, we had Finn Bella and Dominic Mysterio show up. Then Rey Mysterio came in for backup. That didn't work out. And who comes out? Carlito of all people. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. That man, Carlito, damn he's in shape. Doesn't look like he's missed a day of action since leaving WWE. So Carlito came out, even the odds, chased away Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio. As they're running up to the ramp, who comes out? The one and only Savio Vega comes out to a massive, massive pop. And oh, before I miss it, speaking of pops, Bad Bunny's pop when he came out. How did his entrance turn into a concert? The whole Bad Bunny entrance turned into a huge concert. The crowd was going wild. Unforgettable moments. Bad Bunny really is him. He is that guy. And once again, it was back to Damien Priest and Bad Bunny. 
Bad Bunny then hit his Bunny Destroyer, got the pin over Damian Priest, and celebrated with the LWO. At the end of the day, shout out Bad Bunny, shout out Damian Priest, who really is an underrated hero in this match, and shout out the Puerto Rican crowds. What a spectacle, what a match. That is pro wrestling. That was my match of the night, and I think it was everybody who watched the pay per views match of the night. Up next, we moved on to the Bloodline versus KO, Sami Zayn, and Riddle. I was really under the impression that this would be an extremely low point in the night. However, these six men knew exactly what they were doing. They started out slow, let the crowd calm down, let the crowd rest, and then they built it up. And the pace just kicked off, and they went at it, and went at it, and did their thing. And this got the crowd back up. They gave them chance to rest, and then they got the crowd back up. But then we saw a bit of dissension within the bloodline. We saw a bit of miscommunication with Solo Sokoa and Jey Uso and their tags. And then we saw Solo Sokoa grab Jey Uso by the neck, hold the thumb out, and was about to do the spike. But he stopped himself. It's going to be interesting to see what Roman Reigns has to say, because Roman Reigns gave him a job to do, and was his job to deal with Jey Uso. Because if that was his job, that's not what he did. That's not what he did. However, in saying this, the bloodline did get the pin, did get the win, and we move on to SmackDown to see what happens this week. And on to the main event, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, and we probably got the loudest woe in a Cody Rhodes entrance we've seen even louder than WrestleMania this year. Cody started out the match by attacking Brock Lesnar outside the ring, therefore meaning the match hadn't started, using steel chairs, using the top of the announce table, using the steel steps, using everything he can before starting the match in the ring. This was an interesting take because I thought the match was going to start Brock Lesnar just dominating Cody, end to end action, domination, that's what I thought we were going to see, and then Cody eventually getting the win, but that was different. But that's not what Cody does, Cody brings something new to the table every single match, you do not get the same formula with Cody which is something real special. Brock would then of course get this total domination and hit suplex after suplex after suplex, even changing it up, going from German to vertical to outright just tossing Cody Rhodes around. Cody would pull down the turnbuckle pad in an attempt to just grab onto the ropes. And this meant that later in the match, Brock Lesnar would charge at Cody Rhodes who was standing in the corner of the exposed turnbuckle. Cody would move out the way, Brock would go straight into the turnbuckle and I do not see a blade job. Brock Lesnar went straight into the turnbuckle and bled the hard way. I did not see a blade job. Some people suggest there was a blade job. I did. I saw nothing. Brock then locked in his Kimura lock with Cody so close to tapping out. He then turned his body, used Brock's own weight on him and got the quick three count. This is now the second time that this has happened. Bobby Lashley did this not too long ago, and now Cody Rhodes has done it. WWE Backlash was really a special, special pay-per-view, and I think it will live in the hearts of many Puerto Ricans and many WWE fans around the world. WWE is really embracing their global audience by having pay-per-views around the world. So WWE, here's my question. When are you coming to my home country of South Africa? When are we getting a pay-per-view? Triple H, make it happen. Let me know what you guys thought about this pay-per-view, guys. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit all the buttons down below, comment what you thought, and we'll see you next time.